video we'll be looking at blood grouping. We previously touched on this subject when we were busy with the different types of dominance that you get. And then we also did some genetic crosses. According to exam guidelines, you need to know these three points when it comes to blood grouping. You need to know that the different blood groups are a result of multiple alleles. You also need to know how to write those alleles and that they result in the four blood groups that we get in humans. You also need to be able to do genetic problems involving the inheritance of blood type. Now, what is a multiple allele? With regards to blood, it is three different genes or alleles for one trait on the same locus of the chromosome. Now, with other multiple alleles, you could say or more. There could be three or more alleles or different genes. Now, using Mendel's pea plants as an example, um, pea plants were either short or tall, so that was two traits um, of one allele or two alleles on the locus, on a specific locus. Then they could have been green or yellow, so those were also two traits. Now we are looking at something that has three alleles, so three traits that is found on a specific locus of a chromosome. Now the alleles, as you can recall from that previous video for blood group A, it is written as follows, blood group B, and then blood group O, which is the recessive, is written with a lowercase i. Blood group O and blood group B are both dominant. So the alleles are written with a capital letter um, in both cases. Whereas with blood group O is recessive. So it is written with a lowercase i. Now blood shows complete and co-dominance. And where that comes in that is if you have an allele for blood group A and you have an allele for blood group O. Because A is dominant, it will overshadow the allele of blood group O and in the phenotype, the person will have blood group A. Same with blood group B. If the allele for blood group B um, is with a recessive blood group O, B will dominate and in the phenotype, you will see B. The only time that blood group O will come through because it is recessive if is in a homozygous case, then you will see blood group O. So that is complete dominance. With regards to co-dominance, that comes in um, if there are alleles for A and B. So probably one, let's say, from the dad and one from the mom. A and B are equally dominant, so both of these alleles will be seen in the phenotype. So that is when the person has blood group AB, and that is an example of codominance. I made up a table here, so you can just see it visually as well, the phenotype and the genotype. So if somebody has blood group A, their genotype can be written in one of two ways. So it can be homozygous dominant um, in this case, or in the following case, it can be heterozygous um, with a recessive blood group O allele. Blood group B, same thing, or like that. AB, uh, codominance, written like that, and then blood group O will appear as follows. So that is what the genotype will look like and then the phenotype will be the type of blood that the person then has. You don't need to know this but I would like to explain it to you so you can understand it a bit better when it comes to blood donation or receiving a transfusion, why certain blood types can only do donate to certain blood types or they can't receive from other blood types. So if we look at blood type A, on blood type A, they will have antibodies for B. Now, on the red blood cell, there are antigens. So, type A will have antigen A on the surface, but it will have anti-B antibodies floating in the plasma of the blood. If somebody has uh, type B blood, they will have antigen B 
on the surface of the red blood cell and then they will have anti-A antibodies floating in the blood plasma. So let's say somebody with blood type A receives blood from somebody with blood type B. Those antibodies will attach to the surface of the red blood cells. Now if you recall grade 11 work when we did immunity, um, you will know that this causes the, the cells to then clump together. We call that agglutination and then they get destroyed. So it's very bad. It can cause the death of somebody if it is not caught in time. Then anti, um, sorry, type AB blood, they have neither antibody because they contain both uh, antigens for A and B. So there's no anti-A or anti-B antibodies in the blood, um, in the plasma of the blood. So that is what AB is like. And then blood group O has neither antigens for A or B, but they do contain antibodies for A and B. So where does donation and receiving come in? Let's look at type A blood first. So they cannot have blood from somebody with blood type B. We know that already. But they also cannot receive blood from an AB person. And the reason for that is because of that B antigen. It will trigger those B antibodies and it will cause a very bad reaction. So who can they receive blood from? They can receive blood from other A types or blood group O because blood group O doesn't have any of those antigens that will react to the antibodies. And that is also why blood group O is known as the universal donor. Okay, looking at blood type B, same thing as with A, they can not receive from blood group A because of those antibodies and also not blood group AB because of the A antigen that appears on it. So who can they get from? They can get from other Bs and then also blood group O. Blood type AB, they can have any type of blood. So they can receive from O, they can receive from A and B because they've got both the anti um, antigens for A and B. So they can receive from anybody and then O doesn't have any antigens so it, it won't react badly. But they are the universal receiver. They can't donate to everybody because um, of the antibodies that blood group um, O has. So they will react to the, the antigens on blood group AB and then also, uh, like I said, blood group A will react negatively to those uh, B antibody or the B antigen and so forth. Same as with blood type B as well. Then blood group O, they can only have blood from other O's. And that is because of those antibodies. So if blood group AB donates or B or A, those antibodies will be triggered um, by those antigens on the surface of the red blood cell. Yep. Now it gets a little bit more complicated. Uh, once again, you don't need to know this, but I would like to explain it to you so that you know what, what is going on. You would have heard somebody say that they have O negative blood or they are perhaps A positive. So what does that mean? We call that the rhesus factor. And the rhesus factor was discovered when they were researching or doing experiments on the rhesus monkeys when they were looking at, the, at their blood types. And they realized that there was um, another antigen on the surface of these blood, red blood cells and they called that the rhesus factor. Now, you can either be... Um, rhesus positive so that means that you have that antigen on the surface of your red blood cell the large larger population of the earth are all rhesus positive or you can be rhesus negative which means that those uh, antigens do not appear on the surface of the red blood cells now very interesting is that somebody who is rhesus positive can receive from other positives 
and negatives. They can receive blood. Um, so let's say it's an A positive person. They can receive blood from both A negatives, A positives, O positives, and O negatives. But if the person is rhesus negative, they can only receive from other negatives. Otherwise, their body's immune system will be triggered. And that brings us to another interesting fact is with uh, pregnancies. So let's say a rhesus positive male um, reproduces with a rhesus negative female. The female's body can have an adverse immune reaction to the baby if it is rhesus, if it has rhesus positive blood. So the mother then produces antibodies, Rh antibodies, and that can actually move through the placenta uh, towards the baby, and that can then um, kill the red blood cells. So basically those antibodies destroy the baby's red blood cells. And what do red blood cells do? They help to transport oxygen. That is one of the major things a, a red blood cell does. So that is... Um, then when you get, they call them blue babies because they will have a lack of oxygen. So when those babies are born, they have like a bluish tint to them. They will recover afterwards. So this is the first pregnancy. Now what's interesting as well is that the immunity of the mother increases with the following pregnancies. So the first baby is still safe. But if she does fall pregnant again and the baby has R rh positive blood her immune response will be even greater because now her body has built up this memory of these antibodies and the next time she falls pregnant she can actually kill the child but don't worry there are we 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 live in a modern world and there are uh, medicine medicines available and they actually inject the, the the mother and basically that forms like a barrier so that these antibodies of the mother cannot penetrate through the placenta to the baby and the baby will be born safe. Okay, let's look at some, some questions with regards to the inheritance of blood. I think let's start off with the easier of the two. Um, a man is heterozygous for blood group A. So that means A will be dominant and he's heterozygous, so he will have a recessive O. Uh, the reason it's not AB is because then they would have said the man's blood group is AB. And he marries a woman with blood group O. So the woman's blood group will look like that. Okay, use a genetic cross to show the phenotypic ratio of the offspring. So P1 phenotype. What will we have? So the man's looks like that, and then the females as follows. Oops, that's the genotype. So let's just fix that. Sorry. So okay. Now we can get to the genotype jump ahead there a bit. Don't make the same mistakes I do. Do you see how easy that is um, if you into it and you focus in the exam and then you lose your concentration for a bit you can lose two marks in such a case. Okay so then meiosis has to occur uh, so that fertilization can take place so we can separate those alleles and see what is going to happen. Okay, you know that we have to take this A down, this I has to go down, I put it at the back um, because it is recessive, but we know that it's going to join with another recessive group in any case. Okay, so F1 genotype, what will we have? We will have two of these and two of these and then the phenotype so two heterozygous 
A's and two sorry that's homozygous and then they ask for the phenotypic ratio so that will be two to two so simplified one to one or if they ask the percentage chance 50% chance of it being blood group A um, and 50% chance of it being blood group O. That is the end of this video with regards to blood grouping.